Hello and welcome to another video. I made a video before about why Power BI is so important in cybersecurity and someone asked a question of specific use cases for Power BI and data analysis in general within cybersecurity. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about why it's important, why you should pick up and try and learn data analysis as a skill because it can add value. So as security professionals, I think one of the biggest struggles we can have is relaying the importance of security to senior management and often systems vulnerable ability assessments, reports, whatever it is, can have very technical and boring looking data that as a security professional would understand. But if you sent that to your management or the board of directors, they won't necessarily understand the value of it or why it's important. So what you can use data analysis to do is to essentially pull operational security technical data, pull compliance and governance data, project related data concerning cybersecurity, and put them all into a nice, beautiful board that visualizes exactly what's going on, what percentage, summary, charts, and gives anyone who's not technical a quick understanding of where you are and the level of risk they are exposed to. So how I would do this for the technical security data, you can have operational security security data. You can have things being pulled from endpoint security tooling, XDR, antivirus, anti-malware, whatever it is, or patch management software. Now that will give you a good indication of unsupported operating systems, applications, etc. And you could also do something similar with your networking equipment to pull firmware versions, what's out of date, what's supported, and what needs attention. Then if you're rolling out, for example, something like USB blocking, or you're trying to better manage passwords, you can also pull that data in compare that against your policy or your standard that is set internally or because of a regulation or law or certification you're trying to adhere to or align to. You can also look at users versus domain admins. That's quite a useful statistic to tell you if you have too many domain admins for the amount of users you have. And if you have any specific security tooling or SIEM tools, you can also pull data from them and use that as part of the visualization. So you've got your technical operational security data and all of this stuff looks boring it's just rolls and columns with numbers and values and stuff that doesn't mean much to anybody but you can visualize it and create templates that will pull this data in and spit something out that basically gives you a percentage of completion a chart with like colors of like red green yellow you can use a traffic light kind of system you can use ticks and crosses to tell you what percentage is completed and what part of the business you can split this up depending on how big your business is what areas you're looking at etc etc so that's one side of things so that's one thing you can do with data analysis and Power BI another really useful use case for data analysis is compliance if you've got so many different controls from different standards that you're trying to be compliant against let's take for example the ISO 27001 Annex A controls and or NIST controls you might also have 9001 quality or service management or business continuity or whatever it is cyber essentials it could be anything SOC 2 type 2 etc etc so you can have these controls that you're trying to comply against now those split up into separate areas or domains and have subheadings so you can actually visualize this in terms of compliance of how compliant you are against certain controls or a group of standards that you're trying to comply towards and those can be split up into different areas now if you was to tell a senior management member I'm not a security person a business person yeah we've got annex a 5.3 that we are trying to comply against and we're implementing 5.4 and we're struggling with 5.6 or whatever 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 they're just going to probably fall asleep but if you had maybe a pivot table or something like power bi where you have a summarized version of everything that you've done where you're compliant and where you're green where you're red what's outstanding a total percentage that is just a better way to demonstrate your compliance against security standards so from a compliance perspective it can be very useful now you can obviously use excel to do this or a spreadsheet but power bi is also one way of doing this too another thing would be putting in risk data so obviously you can put in risk data and your overall risk exposure risk scoring risk acceptance etc etc there's a lot of risk data you can pull which is basically stuff that would be in a business's risk register but you can also include other items such as internal audits 
how many have been completed, how many are remaining, how many findings have been raised, is there a trend in one particular area? And you can study this over time. You can also pull information about your supply chain risk management system. Are you completing vendor assessments on time? Are there any vendors that are particularly risky? How is your overall risk within your supply chain? What's the exposure? You can start to picture these things if you're regularly completing vendor assessment and the questions you're asking and the things you're checking within your supply chain correlate to a risk library that then generates a score for each vendor or third party. You can correlate that data within Power BI, create something beautiful to say, recently we've been taking on a lot of risky vendors, for example, or that we need to review our risk threshold for acceptance because a lot of risky vendors are being accepted and that's just business as usual. Do we even have the right threshold set for a specific risk assessment of a vendor, aka a vendor assessment, a third party assessment, can have a lot of names. You can also look at like phishing assessment results if you do conduct them internally. You can assess the effectiveness of your training by conducting phishing assessments, which you can also pull into here or workshops or training you might have internally. You can also include data from like vulnerability assessments or penetration test reports or whatever it is. And those can also be included within your Power BI or your data visualization dashboard. Of course, there's a lot more things you can include. And this is a fairly kind of mature item, but essentially you've got all these different security activities going on that all have data associated with them. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to visualize all this data for your stakeholder. So they look at that and they can just quickly understand where you are. It could be something like 90% of our endpoints or our laptops are actually patched and compliant with the policy and are on the latest operating system. 10% are not what we're we doing about those. And it's creating those high level questions from them. And you can actually show them what's been done over time, especially if you add trends in there. So you could have started off at like 50 or 40% compliance. And over time, you've built it up to 90 or 100. And it's the same thing with very specific parts of that operational security data. You can show the trends and improvements you've made to make their organization more secure. And even with internal audits, if you're tracking this data over time, you're raising less findings and you can evidence and demonstrate more compliance that would indicate some level of improvement. Essentially, what you have is a point in time picture of how compliant you are with everything you're trying to achieve within security. And what you're trying to do is set targets and over time trying to meet those. And it breaks down everything a security person might be doing or a team or a combination of teams into very basic, easy to understand data visualizations where anybody can look at that who's not technical and think, okay, we're getting more secure or there's a lot of risk there. What is going on there? They can ask questions and, you know, this can help with funding and so many other things. And that's kind of the main purpose. I think data analysis is good because it translates the technical security language and the day-to-day -day life of what security people are doing into real numbers that you can just track and see and you can deliver a lot of value to boards because they love this. You know, they love charts, they love graphs, they love visualizations. It's just easy to understand as opposed to sending them huge emails or reports that they're not really going to read. They just want to be able to look at one or two pages and quickly understand what the hell is going on and where you are in terms of compliance and projects and activities that you're doing. And that's why Power BI is such a powerful tool. Obviously, there's so many different ways of doing this. You can look at like integrating it with systems and pulling live data and setting it to automatically refresh, or you can just pull export and just look at it at a more point in time type thing where you can do it every week, every month, every six months, or however often you want to do it. But you can essentially create so many different types of charts and graphs and tables, data visualizations that are very easy to understand. And that's kind of the main objective. Now, the examples are specific to what you need to do and what you need to track, but some businesses aren't at this level of maturity. They haven't even begun projects or they're not patching properly anyway. So they need to kick off the projects and get things going. And I think doing the work is more important than visualizing it and translating it to your board. As long as the security and the IT teams understand what needs to be done and there's some sort of understanding between management and the IT and security teams. This is, I guess, just a stage of maturity for some organizations who have reached a certain level and then want to track things and stay on top of them. And it's a very good skill you can have. And even on a very individual level, you don't have to do all of 
these things and create this master dashboard of all the cybersecurity activities that the organizations do and technical, non-technical compliance, etc. You can just do one thing, one of these items and visualize that alone. For example, you can create a really nice dashboard of just the compliance area, internal audits, finding what's outstanding, corrective actions, vendor assessments, things relating to projects, and just keep it simple just to show to your manager or to your directors or senior management of what is going on and it's a very slept on skill within cybersecurity. of course it's important to be able to do what you need to do when you are able to produce visualizations and reports that almost beautifully and colorfully translate what it is you're doing that's kind of the next step because you almost see more valuable even though you're doing the same thing but because you can wrap that up in such a nice visualization and report people appreciate it more and they see more value in what you do because they understand some of it and they can see I guess the percentage of compliance increasing or the outstanding items being closed and the progress that you're making so yeah I would recommend learning Power BI it's kind of a side skill to have you know obviously focus on security and IT knowledge when and where relevant but I do think data analysis is something that you should just have at least a surface level understanding standing of and be able to do very basic things with it you don't have to be some master r or python coder to write these and be able to utilize and lean on all these amazing data analysis libraries i think at the very basic level just understand how to use a power bi kitchen or tableau or any other data analysis tools and then translate that into showing your management your directors people within your organization what you do in terms of security and then be able to track that study the trends and look at the improvement over time so yes i would definitely suggest learning power bi i'll chuck in a couple of resources within the description and um, there's so many open source data sets as well that you can use just to play around with and learn the basic principles of data analysis and visualization so yep yeah, check that out i honestly never knew how valuable data analysis would be in my career but i've used it in every single job since i've learned how to use power bi and it's not normally part of a security professional study roadmap but I really think it should be just as a lot of other things that you might not necessarily need to know but can add value so yes though the overview of the use cases for data analysis and data visualization within cybersecurity. I apologize if I couldn't show specific examples of things I've created because those are obviously going to be confidential but included some examples that I found online just to give you an idea of what it can look like and what it does look like if you were to do it and I'm sure you can see the value in that for a board member who's too busy to read a long report and just wants a quick summary so yeah you save a lot of people time you save the business time time is money you become more valuable to the organization because you can effectively translate all your security activities into a few pages or one dashboard that summarizes everything and gives them the high level information they need so if you've enjoyed this video please like comment share and subscribe and i will see you in the next one